So what I will aim to cover with this video is the Salesforce out of the box approval process and let you decide if this works for you and your team. Before I cover any specifics about the deal, um, there is a little bit of setup required for the approval process. Uh, the first thing is for you to almost work backwards and decide who is it that needs to approve a deal. Is it just an individual, a fixed user, or a team of people? The team might be legal, accounting, uh, leasing department head, but even within those titles are there respective people that roll up to that. And if there are, you'll want to set up something called a queue. A queue is essentially just the name of a group and then the individuals that belong to that group. So if you had an accounting team, you might want to call it accounting. Um, decide if you want those members to receive emails, decide what objects it applies to, in this case it would be deal, and the users that should be part of that team, users within Ascendix or Salesforce. And so you can select the one or multiple users and add them. And obviously you could change that over time. So that's what a queue is. In this example, I've got a leasing department heads queue. It actually only has one person on it and a legal team queue that has another person on it. Obviously you can add multiple. That's step one. Step two is setting up the email notification that the approver or approvers get, letting them know that something requires their attention. And so in this example, a very basic text approval here that says there's a deal that's currently in negotiation and it requires your approval. I said this only because the approval process I set up as a sample basically says when the sales stage equals negotiation, then fire off the um, approval process or allow the user to submit the deal for approval. Of course, this will vary. Um, so this is just some nomenclature here to directly access the deal record itself. Click here to approve or reject. Simply respond to this email, which actually is pretty cool. The user could just respond with approve and it's approved or reject and it's rejected or click here to approve within Salesforce. So there's two records. There's a physical deal record that most users are used to seeing and entering the data. Then there's the approval record, which is essentially only a record that the approver sees with the high level information to be reviewed about that deal. And then the option to approve or reject directly within that approval screen. So this gives them the option to access both. And then finally, setting up the approval process. So I've set one up already, but I'm going to go in and edit it from scratch such that um, it will hopefully allow us to be able to see here. First thing you do is you name, you name it, you name your approval process. The next thing is you decide if certain criteria needs to be met. As I was saying before, I happen to say when the sales stage equals this, then allow the process to commence. You don't have to have anything in here. If you don't, that means any record is able to be submitted for approval. Um, but if you do this, it's a little bit of a gatekeeper to say anything before negotiation really should not be allowed to be submitted for approval. It's quite a bit of prompts here. Um, I won't go through the meaning of every single one of them. In this case, um, I did not do select field use for automated approval routing. I just left this blank. This is where you can decide if only an admin can edit the record after it's been approved, that, that being the deal record, or can the administrator or the assigned approver, i.e. the legal team accounting team, can they edit the deal record? So you can allow that there. Next is the selection of the approval template, which is what I showed you before with the email that goes out. And this is where you would select of all of the available fields on the deal, what you want to appear for the approver. Now you may have 200 fields on the deal record. The question becomes, do they really need to see all 200 or is it just some high level information? So you could decide what you wanna add. I'm not sure if there's a max, if you could add all of them or not. I've just added some high level ones here. I've also allowed it to say display approval history. This way, if there's multiple people um, looking to approve it, they'll be able to see if it's been rejected by others, etc. And then this is who's really allowed to submit a deal for approval. So here the default is the deal owner, i.e. listing broker, i.e. person who's working on the deal. You could add multiple if you've got, if you want an admin to be able to submit on the behalf of someone, you could obviously add multiple people as you see fit. And you wanna be able to allow the submitter to recall in case they quickly submitted it but forgot to add something so they could recall their submissions and save. 
Now that's the top part. There's also um, how to design or designate who your approval approvers are. And so I have something called an approval team. And so if we take a look at that, we'll see how that's set up. So this is where it could get a little bit tricky. You've got some options for deciding who the assigned approver or approvers are. And you're sort of all doing it all in one step. So you could let the submitter choose the approver manually. We've, I've not contemplated this, so I've not really delved or created a video for this. You could assign it to a single queue or multiple people. So in the case of multiple, you can actually add users, queues, or related user. Related user won't be relevant because it'll be pulling from fields on the deal record and none of this will apply. So it'll either be an individual user, which will look up to your user database, or a queue that you've already established. And as you can see in this case, I've decided that two teams or two queues should be the recipients or approvers. The next part is um, really a decision of do we want it to be sequential, approve or reject based on the first response? Is there a sequence or does it require unanimous approval from all of the approvers? And again, this is uh, it's a either or, you can't select both and you can't basically have different configurations of saying, well, these two teams have to be unanimous and then some other two teams are sequential. And so if we say unanimous and save, and that is pretty much it. Um, the other things are just some sort of, um, do you want to have the record locked or unlocked for editing when it's approved or when it's rejected? So that's pretty much it. So now I'm gonna go to the front end. I have a deal here for Chick-fil-A renewal. It's at the touring stage. It's not at negotiation. I've got some information about the property and, and whatnot, whatever filled out here. And there's an option to submit for approval. Now I want to show you what happens because this is not at the negotiation stage. It allows me to type in something and I could say, please review and submit. And we get an error message. No applicable approval process was found because we've got that gatekeeper that says the deal has to be at negotiation. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And probably refresh it for good measure. and try it again. And off it goes. The first thing that happens once you do that is you'll notice as a related record is an approval history. And that already basically captures who the submitter is, what their notes are, and then where it is in the process of who it's assigned to. And so that being said, you could see there's a great deal of transparency here, the name of the team, which is all simultaneous. And again, we decided it was unanimous. Now, a few things key things here. If this deal has attachments, whether that attachment is in a box.com integration or it's uploaded directly on the deal record, the actual approver, when they look at their approval form, which we'll take a look at in a minute, won't have those attachments. They'll have to go to the deal to check it out. So before we log in as one of those other approvers so that we could see what the world is like according to them, I also want to pull up a email that would have shown the um, approver that there's something for them to approve. So here's my email template as a recipient, subject, a deal is awaiting your approval. Hello there, there is a deal that is currently in negotiation and it requires your approval. So they can click here to directly see the deal itself. When I literally click the hyperlink, it will redirect the approver to the actual deal record. But the actual deal record will not allow them to um, uh, reject, I, I suppose they can. Uh, they can from here approve or reject it, but I think as a best practice, um, if they go directly to one of these other links, it will be the actual approver record, which you'll notice that it looks different. It says deal approval pending, shows you that it's the legal team, shows you who the submitter is, the fields that I decided were relevant for the approver to see, the comments, and then the ability to approve, reject, or reassign. I am told that also if you reply to the email, and you say reject or rejected, that it would actually update the status of that approval to indicate that. 
not vetted this out. So if this doesn't work out, I've at least got that disclaimer. So it is showing it's pending, and I'm not sure if that just takes a while or what, but I was told that that was a feature that you could respond um, within an email and it would update that. That being said, the person who is the approver um, can re be redirected here. They could also obviously click directly for the hyperlink to the deal if they need to see more information. They'll also have an approval dashboard. So obviously they're not just receiving one deal at a time. They may be getting different deals from different individuals um, and agents and whatnot. And so they'll be able to review all of that. And of course, if they reject, they'll state the comments of why it's rejected, perhaps, you know, LOI is not attached or something to that effect and reject it. And so um, you see that it's read there, the comments are updated. Of course, I'm all logged in as the same person, so that's not going to, um, it's going to look a little wonky there, but I think you get the gist of what's happening. We go back to the deal record, we should be able to see that it's been rejected and yet another one has no response. So if the leasing department had, so I'm going to do some wizardry here, I'm going to log in as the leasing person, which is Stephen Bauer. And again, I've not configured it yet, but with the approvals dashboard or tab, he'd be able to see what approval requests are in the queue. He can decide, you know, what needs to be visible here. Now, now another approver um, looks at it and says, you know, looks good to me. Maybe he didn't care about the LOI or didn't notice it was missing and then approves it. Come back to just noticed here that this is actually not the Chick-fil-A deal, but rather a different deal. And so that goes back to our unanimous thing. Um, we had decided that this needed to be a unanimous approval. And so if one person reject, one team rejected it, the other team um, doesn't have the ability to basically approve it. It needs to be re-approved in order to be visible by all. So Effectively, the key decision to decide here is if you need sequential approval or unanimous approval for that deal process or that approval process. So that'll give you an idea there. So that's a very high level summation of um, how the approval process works within Salesforce. I know they're constantly looking to make upgrades to it. And, and so, but this 